This evening, first, a suspected bandit loses his life in a chaotic robbery attempt at Port Moran Market. We'll take you through the tense moments that led to his capture and death. Plus, two early morning police raids met a significant cannabis hall in Northwest District. Hear about the arrests and the ongoing fight against regional drug activities. Also, Georgetown's newest attraction in $95 million play park with the nation's first splash park opens in the National Park. See what's drawing families to this vibrant community space. And as consultation begins on the new protection from harassment bill 2024, we'll explore what this proposed law could mean for workplace and public safety. Finally, in Mozambique, police clash with opposition supporters, leaving one dead and several injured in a wave of protests following disputed elections. Stay tuned for these stories and more coming up on Headline News Update. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for October 28, 2024. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, a suspected bandit was killed following a foiled arm robbery at the Port Morant Market on October 26. The incident unfolded around 9.15 a.m. when 18-year-old Harman Pertab, known as Mikey, and an accomplice targeted a 31-year-old jewelry shop owner, demanding gold and silver jewelry at gunpoint. Pertab, armed with a cutlass, attacked the businessman's assistant, inflicting injuries while his accomplice, wielding a handgun, ordered everyone to lie down. The two suspects then looted several jewelry cases and attempted to escape on foot with the stolen items in a blue bag. The businessman raised an alarm and the market vendors confronted the robbers, prompting the accomplice to fire three shots, hitting one individual in the leg and thigh. Pertab was quickly overpowered by market goers, who managed to disarm him and recovered the stolen jewelry, which was later handed over to the police. Pertab sustained injuries in altercation and was taken to the Port Moran Public Hospital, where he succumbed to his injuries during treatment. The injured bystander, Mark Lovell, was treated for gunshot wounds and self-discharge. The body of Pertab was taken to Ramu Funeral Home pending a post-mortem examination. Police investigations are ongoing. On a different note, a $95 million children's play park opens in Georgetown's National Park, featuring swings, slides, security, and the nation's first splash park. Malcolm Carter has more details. A new children's park, valued at $95 million, has officially opened at the National Park in Georgetown last Friday, adding to the park's attractions. Developed by the Office of the First Lady through the National Beautification Project and in collaboration with the Ministry of Public Works, the play park features swings, slides, game boards, restrooms, free Wi-Fi, concession stands, security, and the nation's first public splash park. At the opening, First Lady Mistress Ari Ali highlighted the park's significance as a vibrant community resource that promotes well-being and engagement. Parks like this one play an important role in the development of our children. Apart from physical development, the skills acquired in playgrounds like this one contribute immensely to a child's social and psychological development. The First Lady encouraged parents to stay attentive while their children utilize the facilities at the park. She also emphasized the importance of maintaining the park. A dedicated committee will manage the new facility to ensure its maintenance and lasting impact on the community. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Ejil noted that the project aims to create a family-friendly environment for relaxation and fun. The initiative also provided job opportunities for local contractors during construction. The National Beautification Project has transformed five play parks and public spaces in the country to strengthen community bonds. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. Police conducted two successful cordon and search operations on October 26th leading to the discovery and seizure of cannabis at two residents in the Arakaka Northwest District. In the first operation, around 5.50 a.m. at the Arakaka compound, officers searched the residence of Donut Richards, a 56-year-old businesswoman, and her son Michael Richards, a 32-year-old taxi driver. During the search, Michael Richards voluntarily handed over a plastic bag 
containing leaves, seeds, and stems is suspected to be cannabis. The narcotics weighing over 280 grams were seized and both individuals were taken into custody. The second raid occurred around 7.25 a.m. at the Five Miles Arakaka residence and shop of Errol Belgraves, a 55-year-old businessman. Officers discovered a brown box containing multiple black plastic bags with cannabis. Belgraves reportedly admitted he uses some of the cannabis medicinally for his son. The seized cannabis weighed almost 500 grams and Belgraves was subsequently detained. Both cases are under investigation as authorities continue their regional anti-narcotics efforts. Stick around when we return. Government launches public consultation on new harassment bill to tackle gender-based violence. And family of five seeks public assistance after fire destroys home in Sisters Village. Kisun's Furniture, Mega Sale, Seven Days of Savings, and I'm Talking, Mega Savings, on Office, Furnitures, Outdoor Furniture, Bedrooms, Dining Rooms, Living Rooms, Carpets and Mattresses. Sales starts October 24th to the 30th at all branches. Kisun's Furniture, Mega Sale, a Guyanese business for Guyanese people. Hi music fans, it's here again. It's the Gospel Music Awards 2024 and the launching of Charlie Maloney's new album titled He's Greater. He's greater. It's a double event, one night only. It's praise and worship at the National Cultural Center. Saturday, November 2nd at 8 p.m. or 20 hours sharp. Tickets cost $3,000 and $2,000. It's Gospel Music Awards and a concert. Special appearances by Ambassador Charlyn Maloney and other top Guyanese artists. You cannot afford to miss this one. Be there. Get your tickets at the National Cultural Center, Wireless Connections, Border Market, and Andrew Supermarket. Good, good girl, forget things. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, five spice, and our purpose. Season. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for I even know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket and she pop up up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppers <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies. We put the pep back into your kitchen. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. A family of five seeks public assistance after a fire destroyed their home in Sisters Village, leaving them homeless and in need. More from Malcolm Carter. 
A family of five is calling on the public for help after their home was destroyed in a devastating fire last Friday. The blaze, which is still under investigation, swept through La Tardenang Sisters Village, reducing two buildings to rubble and partially damaging a third. 39-year-old Charmilla Sitram, a mother of one, said her family was inside the lower floor of their two-story wooden and concrete home when neighbors raised the alarm. The fire reportedly began in the front of the bedroom on the upper floor and quickly engulfed the structure. Despite swift calls to the fire service, C. Trump said by the time they arrived, the building was already flat and spreading to the next. The flames not only destroyed Citram's home, but also completely leveled a neighboring house and damaged a third nearby. Firefighters prevented the blaze from spreading through the family, and other affected residents have been left without homes. Citram said the family is struggling with the sudden loss. She and her relatives are now homeless and seeking assistance to rebuild their lives. Anyone willing to offer support can contact Citram at 632-3383. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. The government has started public consultations for the new Protection from Harassment Bill 2024 as part of efforts to tackle gender-based violence. Led by the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security, these sessions allow people to share their thoughts on the draft bill. The proposed law aims to prevent harassment, especially in workplaces and public spaces, focus on protected vulnerable groups from actions like sexual harassment and stalking. It defines harassment by any behavior that causes harm or fear, including following, monitoring, or unwanted contact. The bill would make stalking and threats punishable by fines up to $1 million and jail time. Employers would be required to prevent harassment and the law would establish a tribunal to handle complaints fairly with at least half of its members being women. The consultation period, which includes legal help to explain the bill, runs until December 5th, allowing public input to shape the final version. In other news, the government has expanded its telemedicine program to reach 53 remote communities with plans to connect around 80 sites by the end of 2024. This initiative, part of a digital health agenda, aims to improve healthcare access for isolated regions According to Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, the telemedicine network provides a real-time medical consultation, training, and emergency support for community health workers and medics who can now connect with Georgetown Public Hospital Cooperation Specialists. The program also is in disease surveillance and infection tracking. Initially launched in 2022 in four Amerindian communities, the program grew with $1.8 billion from the 2023 budget, now covering areas in regions 1, 7, 8, 9, and 10. The government anticipates that by mid-2025, nearly all healthcare facilities in remote areas will be digitally connected, further transforming healthcare accessibility in Guyana. Don't go away after the break. Venezuela opposition activists found dead near detention and Zimbabwe water crisis prolonged drought forces major dams to shut down. Good, good girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fractured my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get you. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Kisun's Furniture, Mega Sale. Seven days of savings, and I'm talking. Mega savings on office furnitures, outdoor furniture, bedrooms, dining rooms, living rooms, carpets and mattresses. Sales starts October 24th to the 30th at all branches. Kassoon's Furniture, Mega Sale, a Guyanese business for Guyanese people. Hello, my fellow TikToker followers. 
Chinese credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and poise cake. For the noodles, all we need will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document platinum flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in high. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she probably buy up enough, enough things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies <laughs> has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. music fans, it's here again. It's the Gospel Music Awards 2024 and the launching of Charlene Maloney's new album titled He's Greater. He's greater. It's a double event, one night only. It's praise and worship at the National Cultural Center, Saturday, November 2nd at 8 p.m. or 20 hours sharp. Tickets cost $3,000 and $2,000. It's Gospel Music Awards and a concert. Special appearances by Ambassador Charlene Maloney and other top Guyanese artists. You cannot afford to miss this one. Be there. Get your tickets at the National Cultural Center, Wireless Connections, Border Market, and Andrew Supermarket. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Good evening. I'm Malcolm Carter, and welcome to tonight's regional and international news. Edwin Santos, a Venezuelan opposition leader, was found dead on a bridge after being detained by state security. His party confirmed. The center-left party accused President Nicolas Maduro's government of politically motivated murder, claiming it reflects ongoing repression. Exiled opposition figures, including Leopoldo Lopez and former Venezuelan ambassador Carlos Vichillo, called Santos' death a political crime, alleging he was tortured. This follows Venezuelan's crackdown on opposition after the disputed July election, where over 20 protesters were killed. Recently, opposition leaders Emwando Gonzalez and Maria Corina Machado received the EU's Human Rights Prize for their resistance. Meanwhile, Chilean voters have sent a stern message to both the governing left and the far right, which had hoped to join an extreme conservative wave that is sweeping Latin America and Europe, Al Jazeera's Latin American editor Lucia Newman reports. Chile's midterm elections were a crucial test for Latin America's youngest left-wing president, Gabriel Boric. The political context of the country isn't good. There have been many corruption scandals and people are very dissatisfied. Left, right or moderate, the majority say they're fed up with the status quo. We never expected to discover that for years, the judicial branch, the police, and politicians had managed to keep their levels of corruption well hidden. Soaring crime in what was the region's safest country was another key issue. This was the very first time that voting in a midterm election was mandatory here, which is why it's being considered a kind of litmus test of the political mood in Chile, just one year ahead of presidential elections. Also, very significantly, this was the first time that nearly a million migrants who are permanent residents here were obliged to vote. That gave an advantage to conservatives, since the majority of these new voters are from Venezuela, like Adolfo, who arrived here eight years ago. I voted for the right wing because they are the ones that make the country work. I saw how my country was ruined because it fell into the hands of the left. Nevertheless, the biggest loser was the extreme right wing Republican Party, whom many had predicted would become the top political force as a neighboring Argentina. The political pendulum may be swinging in Chile, but to the surprise of many, this election has shown that it's moving more to the center than to the extremes. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santiago. 
Internationally, police in Mozambique say one person has been killed and five others injured in a protest by opposition supporters. Demonstrations and violent police responses have been ongoing since disputed elections earlier this month. Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb reports. This is the moment that police used gunfire to disperse a crowd of opposition supporters. They've been chanting the name of Venancio Mondlane, they say won Mozambique's presidential election. They were protesting near a victory rally of the ruling Frelimo party in the northern Nyasa province. The Electoral Commission says Frelimo won the polls, which were marred by widespread irregularities. Six people were shot with live bullets. Pedrito Joao says he took cover behind a car when a bullet hit his arm. We demonstrated to show that we already lead this country. It's not over. I'm just waiting to recover. We know the police commander who ordered the shooting and we will fight back. This video is from the city of Nampula on Thursday. Bystanders are saying the young man's just been shot by police during a protest. Many of the young people calling for change say they have few opportunities in life, things haven't improved for years and they have nothing left to lose. Frelimo's ruled Mozambique for nearly half a century. There have been elections since the 1990s. Rights groups say the level of rigging has grown with every poll as Frelimo's popularity has declined. The recent elections have left many opposition supporters faith in the police, the electoral commission and the government in tatters. The electoral commission hasn't commented on the reports of irregularities Frelimo says its victory reflects the people's will. At the victory rally in Nyasa province, police say the opposition supporters started the violence. They threw stones at the supporters of the Frelimo party. The police had to contain the anger of the opposition. They tried unsuccessfully to take police guns. It forced the police to shoot in the air, which resulted in six members injured by stray bullets. The injured were taken to hospital, Police say one of them later died. Rights groups say more than 10 people have been killed in the police crackdown on election-related protests. The opposition says it will continue its nationwide strike from Tuesday. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Maputo, Mozambique. Finally, five days a week, residents of Zimbabwe's second city, Bulawayo, have no water supply. Severe drought has forced three of the city's six reservoirs to close down. The government has now declared a state of disaster. Al Jazeera's Haru Mutasa reports. Apanglema Dam is drying up, one of the main sources of water for Zimbabwe's second city, Bulawayo. It was decommissioned in early October because the water dropped below pumping levels. Other reservoirs have also been shut down. The drought means Sanson Chigodo wakes up early every morning to use the one tap in his neighborhood before it runs dry. We can go one week with no water at home, sometimes two. When it comes during the weekend, we fill up containers to store for the week. In April, Zimbabwe's government declared a state of disaster. Millions of people aren't just in need of food, the city is running out of water. Most residents only get water in their taps every 133 hours. And, and so people are, are really battling. They, they literally have no water in their taps. They, they have to store water in tanks. Um, they have to walk to the closest borehole. This is Zimbabwe's worst drought in decades. This is a borehole in the community, one of many. When I do this for a couple of times, if you look over there, usually water comes out but it's dry there's nothing it gives you an idea of how dry the area is Nomakawe Moyo buys water in buckets most days of the week she knows this region is one of the driest parts of Zimbabwe but she says this season is bad the drought is terrible the water shortages are worse if it had rained maybe things would be better the city council says it will continue limiting supplies to conserve water. Nomakawe Moyo must wait a few more days before she receives her weekly ration. Harumutasa Al Jazeera, Thanks, Malcolm. 
This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that's it to be two headline news for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6 30 p.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.